So a couple of things we got to go over are one solving for the amount of water that's going to be in these solutions. So we're not using pure water in our solution. We're actually using HCl. So it's mostly water. We just got to do a little bit of work to be able to calculate the mass of the water. And the reason we need that mass is the main equation we're using for this lab is to solve for our delta H. So it's going to be Q, which is heat in this case. And for us, it's going to be the, basically the equivalent for delta H. It's going to be Q equals the mass of the water times 4.18. It's going to be joules per gram degree C. This is just constant. It's going to tell us the units that our equation is going to spit out. So pay attention, guys. This is in joules. It's going to be important later because some of the values are going to be in kilojoules. So you're just going to, have to do that conversion later. And the last variable in this is delta T, which is our change in temperature. I'll give you guys that data towards the end of this video. So as you guys can see, we need the mass of the water here. So the way we can do that is using the density of the solution. So for this example, we'll use one molar HCl, and we're going to use 75 mils of it. And the density of our solution is going to be 1.018 grams per mil. So using that, we can solve for the mass of our solution. We can say we have 75 milliliters of our solution times 1.018 grams per mil. You guys can see here the mils are going to cancel out and leave us in grams. So when you do that on your calculator, you get 76.35 grams. Now this is the mass of our entire solution. So this is the HCl plus the water. We don't want that because we don't have the constant for that. We've got the constant for pure water. So now we have to solve for how many grams of HCl we have. Thankfully, we have all the information we need. So if we remember, molarity is equal to moles per liter. So if I rearrange this, because we have molarity and we have a volume, we have it in mils, we need it in liters, we can do that conversion. What we get is molarity times liters is equal to moles. So if I substitute all my values in, so we started with one molar solution. So it's just times one. So it's just going to be my volume 0 0.075. And obviously one times that is just going to be itself. So I have 0 0.075 moles of HCl. So now that I have moles, I can easily get to grams. So if I remember, moles is going to be equal to grams over molecular weight. So if I rearrange this, moles times molecular weight will equal grams. So if I just substitute in what we have. We have 0 0.075 moles times the molecular weight of HCl, which is 36. Or six grams per mole. The moles are going to cancel out. It's going to leave us in grams. We end up with 2.73 grams of HCl. So now this is the grams of just the HCl by itself. We calculated up there the grams of the total solution, which was 76.3 five so you guys can see if we take the total solution mass and subtract it with the mass of the hcl that will leave the mass of the water so if you guys subtract that from this we get 73.62 grams of water and that will be our mass of water that we'll use to calculate our delta h so now we just have to go over Hess's law very quickly. So the video does a really good job describing Hess's law. I'm just going to kind of fill in some of the gaps that are in there. So one of the big takeaways is 
Hess's law is a state function. What that means is it doesn't care how you get there. It just cares about the beginning state. The best way to think of it is if I had a graph here and these were my, say, products and these were my reactants. Because it's a state function, Hess's law with the delta H's says, I only care about this and this. It doesn't matter anything that happens in the middle as long as we get to that point. So you can either take the direct route to it or you can take a meandering route. As long as your initial and final states are the same, you'll get the same answer. Which is nice for us because it lets us calculate our heat of formation of magnesium oxide, even though we're not directly making magnesium oxide. We're actually using magnesium oxide in one of the steps. So the way this converts to delta H's is we want to get the formation of magnesium oxide. So what we want at the end, the very end, when we're all done with this, we want to be able to get magnesium plus one half O2 goes to MgO. So if you look here, we have the three equations. So the third equation down here is given to you at the beginning. It's just hydrogen gas reacting with oxygen to form water. The two reactions we have here are the reactions we're doing in the experiment. So each of these have a delta H associated with them. So we can call that delta H1, and we'll call this delta H2. And this has a delta H as well, delta H3. That value is in your lab manual. So what's nice with this is Hess's law also says that the delta H of a reaction and the reverse reaction are going to be related to each other. And they're going to be related to each other by being opposites of each other. So if I call this equation here magnesium oxide plus 2HCl going to magnesium chloride plus H2O, if we call this delta H2, if I flip this, the resulting equation, which would be MgCl2 plus H2O goes to MgO plus 2HCl. This guy would be negative delta H2. Now, when I say negative, I'm not talking the sign of delta H itself. So delta H, you're going to plug in values and it will come out either positive or negative. Negative means it gave off heat, which means the temperature was increasing. A positive delta H meant it took in heat, which means you would see the temperature of the surrounding de decreasing. So this negative just says like the value that you're going to get. And I'll show you guys that later when we're summing up. Now, the reason I flipped the second equation is we want to get to this Mg plus one half O2 gives me magnesium oxide. So if we look, we're going to need magnesium oxide as a product. And what's very interesting with this, it's similar to summing up formula in mathematics when you have multiple equations of a line and you try to find a point they meet you add the equation up you can solve for it you can do the same thing in chemistry here and then we can cancel things out when they appear on the same on different sides of equations when we add them up so what i mean by that is if we look at all three of these equations now you guys can see i have 2hcl here 2hcl here so those cancel out now I have magnesium chloride here, magnesium chloride here. So those cancel out. I have water here, water here. Those cancel out. And I also have hydrogen gas here, hydrogen gas here. So if I look, everything that's left is exactly what I want. So if we look, what's left is the magnesium, the one half O2, and the magnesium oxide. So we have all our components to that. So the very last thing we have to go over is since we summed up all of those reactions, we have to sum up the delta H's as well. So our final delta H, our delta H reaction, just like we summed up the equations up there, we're going to sum up our delta H's. So it's just going to be the sum of... 
delta h is. And by that, I mean it's going to be, all this, all sigma means is just sum of. It's just a shorthand that we use for sum of. So if we break this up, it's just going to be delta h1 plus delta h2 plus delta h3. But remember, though, we flipped equation 2, which means we're going to flip the sign of delta h2. So I actually have to go back. This is going to be negative delta h2. And then depending on what the sign was when you guys solved for delta h, you may have negative times negative, which would flip it back to positive. Just keep an eye on your signs. I like writing it out like this and then going back and checking my signs. Once I put in the values I'm going to use for the delta H's.